Hi everybody, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and we did an instructional video for Bioshock Infinite, The Siege of Columbia. And now we're ready to start our actual playthrough. And Luke is going to be joining me in a moment because he's going to be controlling the Founders Faction, and I'll be controlling the Vox Populi. And we're going to be playing to seven victory points instead of the usual ten, but that should still give you a very good sense of exactly how this game works and all of the different rules and situations that you might encounter. But I'd like to get you to the table first because I want to show you the leaders that Luke and I picked so you'll be aware of their special abilities. I have Daisy Fitzroy, which means all of my units are going to be a little cheaper to get to the table, costing one Silver Eagle less each. Zachary H. Comstock is a purist and loves removing the other faction from the board, so anytime the founders are an attacker, they'll get an additional two combat points. At the beginning of the game, a victory point card is revealed, and this is the one that we have, here to stay, and it tells us that if you control four locations on the board that have structures, you can claim this card and it will provide you with one victory point. Okay, well, the board is set up for a two-player game, so when we come back, Luke's going to join me, and we're going to get started. Okay, we're back, and we've been joined by... Luke Smith. Right, and we already took our opening hand of cards, and we rolled to see who would go first, and Luke won the roll and got the big cookie, <laughs> the first player token. So we're going to start by entering into the world event phase. So we draw a top card off the world event deck. It's called Take to the Streets. Let's give you a look at what the card says. In this vote, the Vox Populi player, that's me, I'll be trying to make it happen. And Luke, as the founder, will be trying to prevent it. That's because if I win the vote, I'll be able to choose a player. And Luke, which player do you think I'll choose? Me! No, I'm going to choose myself, and then I'll be able to pick a location that is not currently controlled by another player, remove any territory tokens there, and then recruit two common units for free and place them in that location. Okay, so now it's time for the vote. And Luke, you're the first player, so you have to vote first by placing the cards you want to vote with face down. Okay. How many are you using? Two. So I get to see he put two cards into the vote. I really want to win this. I'm going to play three cards face down to the vote. Hopefully this is going to be enough. And what we'll do is we'll reveal them for you guys to see what the outcome was. Boy, am I glad I spent those three cards. Because Luke, you'll notice, put a three and a two. That's a five. And I put two, two, and two for six. I just barely won the vote. Now, sometimes Booker will get involved in these votes, won't he? Yeah. When does that happen? Only whenever somebody has more points than the other person. Right, but right now we're tied, so no one's in the yeah. lead. Booker's staying out of things. I played three cards into that vote, and so this is where it kind of hurts a little bit, because I have to discard those three cards now. Luke only had to discard two. But on top of that, I played the most influence into the vote. So I get the big cookie. <laughs> All right, so now I am the first player. As and we, yes. you get an upgrade. This is right. I get an upgrade. So one of the ways you can get a free upgrade is if you become the first player like I just did. So let's take a look at my player reference sheet and I'm going to pick one of these things to upgrade. I struggle with this one. I feel like I should maybe be unlocking an ability, but instead I'm going to increase the Silver Eagle value on this Rebel card. We'll see if this plays out into my strategy. And of course we need to resolve the outcome of that vote. And I'm picking Monument Island as an uncontrolled location, removing the territory token there, and then recruiting and placing two new common units from my faction. This territory only has this one location in it. So now I can claim this one victory point. And it puts me one tiny little step closer to winning. And now finally, looking at the World Event card, we see no Elizabeth symbol and no aggressive booker, which is good because he's moving to location 14, think MFG, and he's not going to be fighting anyone here, he's just going to be sneaking around. Well, the world event phase is finished. Time to move on to the player turns phase. I'm the first player, I get to go first, and I start with the produce step. So I can remove cards from my hand to collect the silver eagle value on them. I'm going to be playing my last two cards right now. And this might give you an idea of why I chose the upgrade I did. Let me show you what I'm playing. 
I had two Rebel cards. So by upgrading their Silver Eagle value by one, they're each providing me with four Silver Eagles for a total of eight. I'm rolling in riches. Oh, brother. <laughs> Now, you sounded kind of perturbed there, but one thing I know it's going to make you happy is I have to remove both of these cards. Yes! My hand is empty, so let's hope I don't have to get into any fights this turn. But now I can move on to the build recruit step. Let's go back to the board, and I'm going to show you how I want to spend my money. Now, a special would normally cost four Silver Eagles, but because of my leader's special ability, it reduces the cost by one for units that I recruit. So instead, it's only going to cost me three Silver Eagles, and then I'm going to spend an additional three Silver Eagles to place another special unit in there as well. I really want to hold this position, and I'm a little bit concerned that Luke may want to come in there and attack. Okay, now on to the move step. I'm going to move these two leaders here. I'm going to try to defeat this territory token. I don't feel like there's any threats from the north here, and this is where Luke is probably going to come over if anywhere. So this is where I need to shore up, I think, some defense. But I'd also like to take another territory token as well. So I'm going to move the special into this location, and, and a common as well, knowing that I also have a turret here in an adjacent location to help back things up. But now it's time to resolve that combat, and I think I'm going to start here at this topmost position. And look at this location's name, Luke. Z.H. Comstock Victory Square. I'm Yay. moving into your house. <laughs> so first of all, we flip over this territory token. And what a relief. This is a low combat value, really. Seven here. But if I defeat it, I'm going to get four silver eagles. So into this fight, I'm going to be adding a blue die for the special, a white die for the common unit, and another blue die because of this adjacent turret, which I'll roll up right now. And as long as I get higher than seven, which I clearly did, I defeat this territory token. It gets removed from the board, and I will collect those additional four silver eagles. And I also want a combat, so that means I'm going to be able to take another free upgrade. And I'm going to unlock the Red Hood's special ability. I know you don't know what that is yet, but you'll get to see it a little bit later. Now, something I should mention, if you end your movement on different locations that have territory tokens, they should all get flipped over at once. And this can be very helpful because then, depending on the cards you have in your hand, you may choose to resolve one before the other. In this case, I didn't have any cards, so it made less of a difference. But still, that's important to take note of. And I have to now face a nine combat value. Thankfully, I have two leaders, which means I'm going to be rolling two red dice, and I need to have a total of... Uh, that's not nine. That is yes. six. Uh, Luke, would you accept that maybe <laughs> now I beat them? No. <laughs> okay. Well, this is bad. I mean, this is really bad, guys, because Ooh. now I have to destroy one of the units that participate in the combat. So I'm going to remove this leader. And then all of the other units have to retreat to one of my locations that have a stronghold structure. So I'm going to place the airship back over here in Fink MFG. This token will stay revealed, so now both Luke or I know what we're getting into if we head into that location. Okay, I felt like that was a pretty successful round for me, except for that end there. <laughs> but Luke, now it's your player turns phase. First we have Produce. Produce. Right. What would you like? Is there any cards you'd like to trade in for their Silver yep. Eagle value? What would you like to trade in? I'm going to use the Shotgunner. And what does that give you? Three Silver Eagles. Okay, so let me give you three Silver Eagles. Now you can recruit or build. Would you like to do that? No. Okay, you're going to save your moolah. Yeah. What now? Time to move. Yeah. Do you have some units you want to move? Oh, yeah. All right, let's get you to the table, and we'll see what Luke's going to do. I think I have a pretty decent plan. <laughs> well, let's see what it is. What are you going to be moving? I'm going to be using my special unit. Yes. Here. Okay. And is then... that it? Nope. Okay. And then... I'm going to use my songbird to move into here. Yes. And a leader. Okay. And for safety, a common unit. <laughs> now, why do you say for safety? Because last time you failed. Yes. Big time and you lost a leader. Okay, so Luke is thinking ahead here. If he fails in this combat, like I failed in my combat, he can toss up the common instead of a leader. That's good. But Luke, you're only throwing one special over here. But I have this. You do, okay, you do have the turret, which is going to add another blue die. That's true. So let's flip over both of these, and you can tell me which one you want to resolve. Oh, and they're Ooh. both tough. We've got an 11 combat value here and 8 
on that one. This is going to be tougher than I thought, but I'm going to use a handyman to help out with So this. Luke had some cards in his hand, which I didn't have, and this handyman is going to add three to the combat value. So now, all you need to do is roll five on two dice. Here we go. Wow. Yes. Wow. You didn't even need that card because you had a total of nine. Very nice roll. That is going to defeat this territory token and allow Luke to claim four silver eagles. But you're not done yet. You still have another combat you have to take care of over here at Comstock Center. And it's a total of 11 points you need. I'm going to play another card. Well, this one's not quite as helpful. It does have a combat effect, but that only takes place when you're attacking another faction's units. But it will add this one to your combat value. Now you only need to roll... 10. Okay, so that's going to be two red dice and a white die. Come on, dice! Oh, yes! wow. That was huge. Now that's the way I should have rolled my red dice. You're telling me. 16 points, totally flattens this territory token, and Luke's going to be able to collect six silver eagles. And we Ooh. didn't even mention that when you won that first combat, you would have gotten an upgrade, which you could have taken into this next combat, but you didn't even need it. Nah. But why don't you let you pick out your two new rewards? I'm unlocking the ability of my motorized patriot. And? The ability for my sharpshooter. Going right for abilities first. And if that's not enough, Luke now has control of both locations in Territory D. Lay out your victory point, Luke. Ta-da! Well done. Well, that was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Luke won all of his combats pretty easily. And we forgot something. I'm sure you didn't. I know you were yelling at your screens. Luke has Zachary H. Oh, yeah. Comstock, and that would have given him plus two to his combat values two. when attacking. And you're also rolling in Silver Eagles. Yeah, 13 to be precise. <laughs> that is a lot of Silver Eagles. You know what? We're done with the player turns phase. Now it's time to go on to the refresh phase, right? So now we can discard any cards we want from our hand, but we don't have we any. We don't have any. <laughs> so now we can draw an additional five cards. Back up to our hand size of five cards. Mm -hmm. And then we also reveal a new Victory Point card. So let me flip that over, and I'll show it to you guys right now. This one is called Firepower. And if you control three locations with turrets on them, you can then claim this, giving you one Victory Point. But now, we're moving on to round two, and we've revealed the next World Event card, Purify Columbia. And this tells us that each Founder player may choose to draw one additional action card this round, and place one common unit on any location they control. So obviously this one benefits the founders, so their votes will be a plus. And I'll be trying to downvote it. Well, now it's time to vote, and I'm the first player this time around. So I have to put my vote cards face down first. I'm only putting one in. Luke, how many are you putting in? I'll put two. Okay, so now let's show you guys what the results were. So now you can see my vote card was a little bit of a red herring. I only put in zero influence, but... Seriously? <laughs> yes, I was trying to force Luke to play at least a couple of cards, which worked. He played in a total of three influence, so it's plus three. Take away zero means this vote has passed. And because Luke and I both have a victory point now, we're tied once again, Booker will not get involved in this vote. So I drew another action card, and I get to place a common unit anywhere. So I'm going to place it right here. Well, anywhere that you control, and that certainly yes. works. And Luke, you played the most influence into that vote, mm -hmm. which means that you are now going to be the first player. Hello, everyone. Future Rodney here. The better-looking, more intelligent version of myself that shows up from time to time to correct the rules mistakes of past Rodney and bring clarity to the gameplay for you, our kind viewers. This time, however, I'm just here to gloat. On our series, we tell you that we want to teach you how to play the game. Not play it well, we'll leave it to you to learn and develop your own strategies, but Rodney just made a real bonker of a gameplay mistake in his strategy. He even gloated a little bit about playing zero influence into that vote trying to goad Luke into playing more cards into the vote and draining his hand. He really should have paid attention to his own instructional video where he explained 
the absolute importance of this first player token. You should never just give this away for nothing. When it comes to the player turns phase, if you're the first player, you're going to have the first chance to claim the victory point cards. So is Luke going to claim these victory point cards that Rodney could have? <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil anything. So I'll let you get back to watching the playthrough, but please, please do learn from Rodney's mistakes. Keeping the first player token will not give you a free upgrade, but if you take it from somebody like Luke just did, you then get to add another free upgrade. What would you like to upgrade now? The Flak Man. The Flak Man, all right. And the special ability? Yep. All right, so that's for Luke to upgrade his Flak Man special ability. Now that the vote is complete, we look for an Elizabeth symbol. And sure enough, there's one on the card here. So we're gonna advance the Elizabeth marker on the Elizabeth timeline and then read and resolve this effect. So now we get a little more insight into the goings on at the city of Columbia because Booker has rescued Elizabeth from imprisonment and now for the rest of the game, when he's in the same location as Elizabeth and she is not under the control of another player, he will receive an additional white die when he is the attacker. So I thought Booker was just being passive and sneaking around here at Fink MFG, but as it turns out, he was busy rescuing Elizabeth, who will now travel with him. And in particular, right now, Booker's going to travel to location two, which is indicated here on the World Event card. So both of them will travel together way across the board over to this location here. All right, well now it is the player turns phase, starting with Luke, because you're the first player, and the produce step. Are there any cards you want to discard nope. 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 to get nope. silver nope. 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 eagles? I'm already rolling in money. Okay. He is rolling in money. What about the build recruit step? Would you like to skip that? No. <laughs> Let's bring everybody to the table. Okay. First, I'm going to buy a turret. That's going to cost you four silver eagles. Okay. Now I'm going to buy another one to go right here. I am not surprised. This will allow Luke to claim the firepower victory card because he now has three turrets. So that's another victory point for Luke. And that's not all. No, it's not, because the other victory point card was here to stay. So if you control four locations that have structures, you get another victory point. And once these things are claimed, no one else can claim them. So Luke, that's a guaranteed two victory points. Ooh. And something worth mentioning, when you claim victory points, you get a free upgrade. So let's get some upgrades for Luke. I'm going to unlock the Handyman ability and the one for the Boys of Silence. All that just happened, and we're still in the build recruit step for Luke. Are you done building and recruiting? Nope, I'm going to get a special unit and place it right there. Okay, and that cost Luke another four Silver Eagles. Now we're on to the move step. Are there any units you want to move? Oh yeah, I'm going to move the special unit right here with three common units. All right, so that's going to end Luke's movement. He's in a space with a territory token. We'll flip this over and see what it is. Oh, it's a six. <laughs> this is going to be a breeze. Luke, do you want to add any cards into this combat? Nope. Okay, so this time we remember that your leader is giving you an automatic two. So you really only need to roll four here. Plus, you're going to get a blue die from this turret. A blue die from this turret, because remember, turrets add their blue die to adjacent spaces. Plus a blue die for this <laughs> special, and then three white dies for these commons. I think you're going to be okay. Oh, yeah. Here comes the roll. <laughs> okay, oh, yes. what a breeze. Yes, that was, uh, there's plenty of points there. Uh, Flattened more points again. than I want to add up. So that's going to remove this territory token, and Luke's going to collect three silver eagles. Thankfully, this game has anti-Luke measures, so that if one of the players has three or more upgrades compared to the other player, that player cannot get any more upgrades. Luke, you have five upgrades, I have two. So even though you won that combat, you don't get an upgrade uh -huh. just yet. But you get something even better than that. Let's go back to the table and see what just happened. As you can see, Luke now has all three locations required to have control of Territory E, which gives you two victory points. Well, this has been quite a first gameplay episode. Luke, you're off to a very good start because we're playing a shortened game. He only needs to place two more victory points, and he's won. I still have to place six. Six? Oh my goodness. Okay, clearly I need your help. 
you guys are going to be working with me here. I'm going to show you my cards at the end of this episode. You're going to see the board layout as well. I want you to plan out my entire player turns phase. Should I throw away some cards to get some more Silver Eagles? Should I build and recruit anything? Should I move some units? If so, where? And then we're going to have to resolve some attacks. And if there's certain cards you think I should use during those attacks, tell me which ones. Put this in the comments below. If you like what someone has suggested, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like it, just propose your own suggestion, then people can vote for that. Whichever one gets the most votes, that's what we'll come back and do, and you'll get the credit for having helped us decide how to maybe help me dig myself out of this hole. But if you have any questions, of course, don't forget. You can put them in the comments below, and I'll answer them as soon as possible as well. Over on our Facebook page, I'm going to have some still images of the board and my cards that you can just sort of watch at your own leisure as well, so you don't have to just pause the video to follow along. Listen, guys, until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.